2025 is right around the corner and it is the perfect year to get into game dev. If you're like me and you want to start making videos, well then this is the perfect video on how to start doing it. Today I'm going to be breaking down everything you need to know about game development. From the very beginning to the finished product. There's a whole lot that goes into it, so if you're interested to learn more, stay tuned to the end. So first things first. When it comes to game development, there's a lot of things that goes into it. But the main two things that you're going to need is the ability to code and the ability to make art. Luckily, in the year of 2025, there's a lot of workarounds for this now. There's a lot of free assets all over the internet, and now there's even visual scripting, so you don't even have to learn coding. But, 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 before we get into any of that, let's break it down a step further. What type of game do we even want to make? That's a great question that a lot of people struggle to find the answer. Or, some people are way too easy to answer that question. They want to make the next MMO, RPG, open world, multiplayer game all by themselves, and honestly, it's just not possible. Now I'm not saying you have to make a small game, or a mobile game, or anything like that. It's totally possible to make any game you want to make, but I think it's ideal to keep our expectations realistic. So if you're starting off in 2025 as a new game developer, when we're deciding what game we want to make, I say it's better to make it a more simple game, a more smaller game, and learn as we go and make more projects as we go. Knowing what your goal is and not getting overwhelmed will help you learn and improve way faster than trying to make the next big game. And of course, we don't want to overstress ourselves. Overstressing ourselves is way too easy in this industry. So you can always pivot as you learn and make up as many prototypes as you want to make. I'll give you a few examples of what you can make. We have all sorts of different types of genres nowadays, but the more basic ones are the 2D platformers, the 3D adventures, and even some simple mobile games, just like Flappy Bird. Now that we know what game we're going to make, let's get to step two. So now that we have the game all figured out, we're going to need an engine. Now, technically you don't need an engine, there are some people out there that make their own engines, but for simplicity's sake, let's choose an engine. There's a lot of big picks out there, and personally for me, I like to use Unity, but there's other platforms available, and let me break into some of the pros and cons to them. Unity is a great tool for both beginners and professional game developers. It has awesome 2D and 3D support for all games you want to make, and there's tons of tutorials online everywhere. Unreal Engine 5 is another great choice. It's known for having stunning graphics and all the big budget companies use it. Well, not all, but most of them. If you're trying to make a 2D game, I would probably stay away from this one, but Unreal has a lot of support when it comes to making 3D games with their blueprints and their visual coding. Godot 4 is honestly a system I don't know much about. It's open source and it's gaining a lot of traction and I think it's very similar to Unity. There's a lot of tutorials coming out for it, so if that's something you're interested in trying out, I would give that one a shot too. Finally, Game Maker. Game Maker is such a simple and easy to use tool that focuses solely on 2D games. So if you know you want to make a 2D game and you want something that's easier to use, you might want to give Game Maker a try. Honestly, you can't go wrong with any of them. They're all great choices, even though some have pros and some have cons, depending on the game that you're going to make. But personally to me, I think it's best to just pick one system and dive right in so you can get the learning right away. All right, so you got your engine. Now let's learn the basics. Remember what I said earlier? Well, there's a few things you're gonna need. Programming, art skills, and game design. Yes, you're gonna need to code, at least a little bit. And honestly, there's no better way to do it than just following tutorials online. If you're using Unity, you're gonna to wanna to start learning C Sharp. Or in real, they have a blueprint system where you can start messing around with that, or you can just learn C++. I know they also have a great visual scripting program, so you might be able to get away with not programming as much and using that. For Godot, they have their own GD script, and I think you can also use C Sharp on that program. You don't need to be a pro at programming, trust me, I'm no pro. But learning the basics and being able to understand code when you need to, it's going to go a long way when you're making your game. As for art, whether it's pixel art, 3D modeling, or any other type of vector art, you're going to want to choose your program of choice and learn to mess around with the interface and learn how you want to make your art and learn your art style. There's a lot of friendly tools out there like Photoshop, A Sprite, Blender. Most of them are free, some of them you gotta pay for, but there's a lot of great tools out there for making game art nowadays. Lastly, for game design. Game design is a very underrated skill that not a lot of game developers have. And honestly, it's kind of a hard one to learn. There's no real easy way to learn game design, but what it breaks down to is you wanna learn what makes a game fun. It's very easy to just make a game and it not being fun in the end. And we don't want that, we want a game to be fun. 
Honestly, the best way to kind of go about this is watching movies, playing games, watching videos online. There's all sorts of resources out there for it, but it's not exactly a step one, two, three. It's more of a concept that you just have to grasp. I know a lot of this can be overwhelming, especially when we don't have a lot of time to put into this if we're hobby game developers. So remember to just start small and build your way up. You don't need to learn everything overnight. It's okay if you want to focus on art in the beginning, programming. Just remember to have fun with what you're doing and enjoy the process. Time for step four. Remember to start small. Here's the golden rule to game development. And honestly, it's a rule I probably should have followed. You should start small. You don't need to make the next RPG with hundreds and hundreds of hours for players to put into it. It's okay to make a game like Flappy Bird or an even smaller mobile game. Your goal here is to learn. Your first game doesn't have to be an original game. It's okay if you want to copy. It's great to copy other types of games and just learn the mechanics and learn the process behind making games. As long as you're not putting it up for sale, of course. Think of it as building Legos. You're not going to build a, a skyscraper as your first Lego set. You'd probably start with something smaller like a house or one of those Walmart kits. There's a lot of resources out there that you can use when it comes to learning more about the behind the scenes of game development. And personally myself, I want to do a series teaching that, but I also want to share and highlight some of the other creators and sources out there that I've used when learning. Rackies, Game Maker Toolkit, Code Academy, Udemy, and all sorts of discords and the Reddit communities online. They were such a great help when it came to learning the skill of game development. And don't forget about all the free assets out there on the internet. It's okay to use them for placeholder art. Your wallet's gonna thank you for that one. Finally, for our last step, it's finishing your game. I love this step because it's such a big relief to actually finish and make a final product. It feels so good. And I think it's easy early on to be able to finish a game because it's a very easy habit to get in line with making something and then it not being perfect and giving up and moving on to the next project and the next product and then you never finish anything so i think this step is crucial in the game development world it's actually finishing a project that you start it's okay if it's a bad game and it's not fun it's better to just finish it and go with the ropes and learn to finish a game and see what goes into actually finishing something and once you're done you can upload it to itch.io share it on twitter share it wherever you want because now you're a game developer if you guys found this video helpful, I am so happy to help you guys out. I hope I made you guys great game developers in this year of 2025 coming up. If you guys liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I have more game devlogs coming up pretty soon and I'm hoping to do a few more things on YouTube here. It's my goal to kill it this year on YouTube, so let's see how it goes. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.